Good morning and welcome to Dripping with Meaning. My name is Nicole Marie Campbell and this is my show. Today I have the amazing Steve Novak on. Um, he is a near-death experience um, ex practitioner of his own quantum field um, magical transformation, which has come through him through divine means. Um, he has found a very engaging and simplistic method of um, very much so awaken in the here and now uh, healing. And he is helping and assisting, assisting people daily in order to get that job done. I'm just going to bring him over now so that we can discuss a little bit more of what the quantum healing experience feels like for Steve and the work that he's doing daily. Hi there. <laughs> Hello. So it looks like um, that this would be our second or third show, I think, where we've discussed the topic. And I know that it's um, a daily grind for you. Uh, I know it's something that you've been doing a lot of. Um, and it's unfolding more and more for you as a healing method. Um, this gift that you have been given came to you through a near-death experience. Yep, absolutely. Um, came through basically going there, being there and uh, connecting to it. And then later in my life, learning how to reach that place again. Mm. You know, and then all the information that, that came with that. And then, of course, when I started using it for other people, that's when it really opened up. You know, it was something I was supposed to give back to people. Mm -hmm. and, and doing the work, you sort of figure out more things as you go because more is revealed. Yeah, and with everything in the world changing so much um, and the universe revealing itself more and more to the earth, I think more and more people are they're opening up their baggage and they're looking at the stuff they want to heal. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, with the rising energies on the planet and uh, what we're seeing now with all the lower energy sort of rise up through people. And mm. it, it's like becoming a pressure cooker and it's like <laughs> you're, you're offered a choice, you know, it's like I transmute or I appease this, energy in some sort of way that's trying to come through me or I answer it and I submit to it and become the darkness, you know? Mm -hmm. And then come out the other end. I think in the end, I think your, your tools have navigated a lot for me. Um, and are incredibly helpful towards others. Um, I've been able to, with very limited teaching, um, been able to isolate a lot of what would be the positive, negative polarities of charges and thought and in experience here and been able to focus and center them in a way that through prayer and other meditations, um, I have experienced quite the number of exhalations and being a spirit seer, um, seeing a lot of spirit negatively, let's just say move on. Um, to a more positive space, um, a more Christ-centered, love-centered space. And that's what it's about. It's like, if we can clean ourselves, sort of come into peace with who we are, accept who we are, what we've been through, allow it to pass, and begin to take that space back, right? then we can start to feel the light and the heavy. And as soon as you start to notice, this is heavy, this is light, then you kind of get a choice as opposed to being uh, in a mode of constant protecting oneself. I want to protect myself from this, protect myself from this, protect mm. myself from this. But you're kind of closed off from fully feeling in that mode. Right. And I think that's just so angelic. I think there's something so empowering about uh, the embodiment of spirit and in the here and now and calling on a Christ-centered reality, a love-centered reality, and letting that guide your eyes to open to what I see as a spirit seer, a magnificent amount of color um, and vibration and frequency that's constantly present for me. Um, my gift is difficult to hold and own too. And, and I completely compassionately understand that transformation for the new earth, it's, it needs to take on different shapes and forms, right? Mm-hmm. And that, that's embodying that energy is going to make you want to expand. 
And that's mm. your protection. Your protection is that energy. That's where it comes from. Come and guess, come, come. There's come. nothing, uh, <laughs> nothing we need to protect ourselves from. We need to discern and choose yeah. and be aware. And that's our protection. I think it's, it's also our incredible presence when we can stand on our own two feet and not um, let go, right? It's like there's um strength you know there's a lot of strength you gain by standing on your own two feet in the presence and allowing that as you walk right and, and, and accepting yourself is is brave and and uh yeah and nobody's able to use you against you there's they mm. no longer have power over you you fully accept yourself and you find your um yeah. You find your support and your love through spirit rather than people. And that, that's been very beneficial for me is to learn that I was love as an energy. I just had to work my way back to it. And that's what we are of, right? Um, in my belief and understanding uh, through the sacred secrets of the earth, we have gone through many, 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 many moons of emancipating in the humanoid <laughs> you know, form, we're in the physical human form. But previous to, we were spirit without body, right? And um, when we're taking on these lifetimes and we're taking on that understanding, there is a, um, a beautiful emancipation that's occurring because in this lifetime now, I guess for myself, seeing and feeling and spirit at all times, the responsibility is great, but like you said, it no matter what, even if and with your thought form is why I'm so grateful is if I even and I know I'm slipping right into those states or I'm experiencing them, I keep getting this database inside of a way to plug in and it mm -hmm. keeps firming up like in a very um, beautiful plateau because it's like continuously expanding for me instead of like when I started and I've done like a lot of different shamanistic works, you know, the breathing and the understanding and the sitting and the, and we're in the Western world. And as a Western esoterist and a well-studied one with a lot of rites of passage under my belt, I wanted something that I was going to be able to stand in myself and use those magical abilities. Mm -hmm. But the world becomes such a distraction, right? Like this one quote of yours, we are the energy of love embodied, that is our identity. And you speak a lot about this topic, that it's not possible to truly love another, but we can be love to mm -hmm. understand how to share that. Yeah, definitely. Right? Definitely, it's something we can share with people and it can be a beautiful experience but we don't need to attach to them to feel love yeah. we can become it themselves we have this fountain this energy that's coming down runs through all living beings that we can open within ourselves we're the ones that kind of block it off the uh all the perceived failures we're just practicing it's like we're not failures we are worthy we deserve to have happiness and, and abundance and all that stuff. But these sort of lower programs and these lower mm. selves tell mm. us different and they block us from it. But there's and a like, way to get is, it. And really and truly, what is a lower frequency, right? Like right. When we're speaking about energy and emotion and frequency. It's a lesson. And, and when I lesson, it, it basically embodies the emotions that we most likely will hold on to we will hold on to the energy of so on a holographic level as i see it our bodies when they became you know harmed or our minds as they came through and there was you know this differentiation that between what we are and what we know we are in heart collected a lot of karma and patterning that allows for an emotional experience. And I find now that 
I'm willing to have the experience completely a little bit more every day to experience what it is to just let that go. In my journey, it's really opening me up to be able to help someone else to understand that it's okay for you to open up to your emotions. It's okay for you to feel what's going on physically. And it's okay for you to love mm -hmm. more of what's here. It's okay for you to feel it. It's like a lot of us have never felt safe feeling it because it was always attached to something else. It's like you always, you thought you needed to do this and this and this to get love or love was for mm. me, love was scary because my mom didn't love me, but your mom's supposed to love you. My dad couldn't love me. He was always at work, but your dad's supposed to love you. You never really have that full feeling of what love is. So it becomes scary and you kind of protect yourself from it. It's a prison. And it's really a prison. And, and I notice you do like, cause a lot of your meditational work, you take right into the wilderness and you sit with that um, space, which I think nature is the most nurturing aspect. Um, and you just allow yourself. So you basically allow yourself to connect to divine in the quantum field. Well, when I passed, I went into the quantum field and they talked oh, so about it. your death experience, you actually saw the quantum field. Yeah, I was transported okay. there. And they, they talked to me about the zero point field. And the zero point field theory is that everything is connected. Nothing is separate except for the state of its frequency. Whether it's lower than yours, then you're separated. Mm -hmm. So what I do is, you know, I'll go out into nature. I'll do some breathing. And then I will ask nature to become one with me. Mm. And th this is our energetic body we're speaking of. Mm. You know, we're made out of all the same elements. Our energy that has us thinking we're experiencing life differently than nature. You know, that's what separates mm. us because people live so much faster. Um, mm. But I'll go out there yeah. and I'll ask the trees to become one with me, become one with the water. I'll thank them all. And this brings our energy into alignment. And this, that's where healing is. Wow. You know, being unattached from everything and feeling that, knowing this is everything that I need to experience in this life with. In the present moment. Yeah. Um, your understanding of energy and pain as a teacher, um, one of your statements that you made this week or a week ago past was, um, don't be afraid to speak to your pain, literally command it to leave. I found this a really hard step, but I found it very, very amazing once I could try and really do it. Mm -hmm. Um, literally command it to leave, be firm and persistent, claim that space back. By doing this, you're creating neurons that take back the neural pathways where the negative charge is accumulating. Can you explain that a little bit more? <laughs> I can do my best. Well, <laughs> we make charges with our nervous system, with our thoughts. This is how we communicate as an energetic body. Mm. Um, basically, pain is stored in your cellular memory as a lower dense charge. So what we can do is we can speak to this pain to start moving, to start gathering, to start leaving. Okay. And you want to apply truth to that. Like, you know, it's already done. I know it's true. And that's it. There's no if, ands, or buts. I'm the controller of this consciousness and I'm telling this pain to leave. I'm going to just, for just one quick second, keep, can you, can you just give me one moment, please? Sure. I'm so sorry. I'm in the show. Looks like I got the floor. So basically, you command this pain, these charges that are stored in your cell cellular memory, which are affecting your physical body on a physical level. You command them to gather and leave, and you be firm about it. Um, of course, inviting in spirit for that is very helpful. 
Sorry about that. That's okay. Did so, somebody burn the brownies? Yeah, no, that was, um, it was just like a fire thing. Um, it went off in the building. Um, right. So I, we were, where were we at with that? Yeah. Cause we were talking about the neural pathways. So, right. So you want to create yeah. a positive forceful charge that's going to make all these other charges move. Cause you're dealing with energy in mm -hmm. essence, you're dealing with sort of a positive negative polarity. If you've ever played with magnets where you turn them and they're op opposite and they push mm -hmm. the other magnet, this is what we're doing. We're, since we're electromagnetic largely in our nervous mm. system and this energy and charges get stored in our cellular memory and they accumulate and they accumulate and they accumulate and then you're like oh my knee oh mm. my back and i'm <laughs> i feel you speaking totally. about this as someone who has been completely run over by a car someone who's flipped the car over five times doing 70 miles an hour Mm -hmm. Somebody who's had probably two to three other decent car accidents, played sports all my life, mm -hmm. was addicted to pain medication in my youth mm -hmm. to deal with that pain. And now I take nothing. I rely solely on how my body feels. And then I go into nature and I cleanse it out. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I'm light. I have no pain. Because my recollection of when I passed was going to this field where no pain existed. I was light. Mm. There was no pain. There was no hate. There was no anger. And I know that you can get back there in, in the now. You don't have to die to get back there. You can get your spirit back there. Okay. So when I was younger, um, obviously, like, my spirit journey was, like, in, since, like, eight Cause I've been seeing since I was about that age and I literally was in, you know, um, churches, people's homes, different spaces and places. And I would see what I call, um, well, I know as acrons now, but I would see these darker entities that would leave people's forms or be left in their homes um, and I'd be sitting there in, you know, my auntie's bathroom and I'd be like, Oh my God, how did it get here now? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. And so acknowledging the inner child journey of being able to see these forms and know by the age of 16, that I would go to spirit based, um, stores and I would, you know, um, I go through a lot of catatonic experiences because I was taking on so many energies and thoughts that I didn't realize I needed a discipline or I needed to know, but I was going to a shaman circle, a drum circle, those kind of things. Um, whereas my girlfriends or friends were learning to drive cars. I was walking in the woods and then I'd be laying in my bed and I'd have all my like Buddhist books and my, this book, all my reading material from the East, which I really inclined to. And I became a Buddhist by the time I was 17 or 18 and I've never left Buddhism. And, uh, as I would be able to channel energy and transform energy, as you said, I didn't know what I was doing quantumly because now at this age, because I see what I believe the secret that you're giving me is, is that, and it's been revealed in many, many, many books of knowledge quantumly, is that it is all interconnected and we are connected to a field that Mother Earth carries for us. It's like the, um, it's like that part underneath our skin that has, you know, um, where our, when our muscles are in pain, it grows growths in order to protect our muscles. That's what she is to me. That's what this quantum thing is to me, because that's how it was revealed to me recently when I was swinging on a swing. I was just at the park swinging on a swing. And, you know, it, it's the joy, the joy when you watch yourself go from that low end frequency emotion and take that leap of faith of mm -hmm. I'm not separate from my reality. My feelings and thoughts and emotions are going to become more pro top priority. And I'm going to let myself go and be free in that field of, of love or the experience of what that can be for me. And since you mentioned inner child, that's important too. It's important to do your meditation, 
ask your inner child to become present and then give that inner child love like it was another child that needed love. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody ever. Morning, Michelle. Nobody ever played with this child. Nobody ever loved this child. Yeah. This child didn't get enough attention. Well, now I have the energy to do that and release that part of myself. Mm. Oh, yeah. And not only just in the release, but in this sort of, for me, as I said, coming together with the pieces of the tree, you know, all the pieces and the energy that are me are mm -hmm. you and the next person. But they just came in on their own you know, ability to see and feel and experience to the point that they may not be exactly ready to let go, to understand that there's so much more around them than what they're able to see. Because when you're a seer, you always feel that it's like a, a thorn in your side, right? You're just mm -hmm. trying to express like everybody else. But they're like, oh, no, you just you need a healing. You need to get that out of your system. You need to. I'm, I'm like, this doesn't stop. Or you're too sensitive. Uh, it's like uh, I suppressed a lot of that my whole life, not understanding that, hey, my accident probably caused some sort of shift in my consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I would be so sensitive in some situations. I wouldn't understand why this wave would come inside me and just make me feel mm -hmm. 10 times what another person would feel about a situation. I had no idea how to handle that, how to process it. The empathy of it, what they call empathy, but maybe is just super human. Um, well, it's data. You're, you're able to take in more data because you're in that source. You're in that uh, expanded bandwidth, so to speak, where you, you're able to take in more data like a faster internet. Mm -hmm. And then catch on to the experience um, as you're healing those, those nuggets of of emotion that are storing in the body that's where what, transmutation comes in yeah and, and and we can speak on that but i think it's phenomenal that like and you don't insist it but in your thought forms yes michelle yeah definitely relates to the too sensitive but um that when you're having the experience of it that your ability to hold on and to regress or to move forward is in that present moment and that you can experience the healing of it now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does take work and consistency, but that you have the power to ignite within yourself and the fire well, that, of yourself. That's that a good you, point because yeah. you, we were speaking about trauma and things like that. That keeps mm -hmm. you in the past. That keeps right. part of yourself, even if you're not aware of it, locked in the past. Mm -hmm. And you want to become fully present. That's the goal is to trim the fat that's holding us down, mm -hmm. grounded in other places and become mm -hmm. fully present where present, we are. Right. So that we can reap the benefits of Mother Gaia and we can be in unison. Um, the quotation you did, the energy of pain can be a teacher, but also a trespasser if it overstays its welcome. Mm hmm. It goes when we say it goes, dense energy knows that it's natural order of creation. Like, where did you get that information? It just is so profound. Just pops in. <laughs> um, it's just part of me. But yeah, it's like you can have it be a teacher and you're learning and learning. But what you're once you're becoming aware, it's it's more like bondage yeah. and you don't want it anymore. Yeah. Then that's the time to use your voice, whether it's your outside voice or your inner voice. Mm-hmm. And we're speaking about the lower self because everybody has a lower self and a higher self. You know, the best version of us that we're in and then mm -hmm. the lower version of us that everybody has. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the lower version gets a little too big and yeah. this starts to, to bleed into our daily lives and how we operate in cycles and patterns. Mm -hmm. And we can take it back with our voice. In the, in the beginning was the word. And that's what we need to use, our word, yeah. to take back our sacred space, to feel peace, to eliminate the anxiety, the worry, the stress, the fear. Because the world's going to happen anyway. Mm. We don't need to be attached to the chaos of it to see it happening. Yeah, the cards are reading as such, too, that there's almost this, a need for strategizing and understanding that um, 
we kind of manipulate ourselves through our own insecurities and we're doing that through one another. And when you stop and you realize that pain that you've been holding on to is too grand and it needs out, whether it's in a hospital bed or it's with a friend or in a therapy office, which why yesterday I promote it intentionally that um, anyone feeling and experiencing pain in any manner should allow themselves to be heard and seen and understood. Because I think that the more that you can get over that hurdle of sharing, Mm -hmm. Um, our inner turmoil is okay because um, it's a beautiful space you can be in knowing you're strong enough to face what's truly in your heart or your mind and heal your own body and not have a um, a long-term dependency on medications or on negative relationships and stuff. Um, get to that positive expectation and develop some clarity, right? You want to have the clarity yourself because that is basically telling your vessel to vibrate in a frequency that meets up with with your mm-hmm. forever, right? And it was a lot. It's a lot easier for me to understand that I was dealing with energy. I'm like, okay, this is energy. It moves if I introduce a different energy, a higher mm-hmm. energy. So I'm going to do that for a while, and mm-hmm. then that that became my life connecting with that energy every day to keep myself clear. Because if I don't keep myself clear and I'm not doing my daily practices, Mm -hmm. I begin to accumulate lower energies. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, we can, uh, we can create them and they can teach us right away, but they don't have to overstay their welcome. Um, This was a post that you put up as well. I've just been sneaking around in your stuff, but Um, we've been infected with the idea that love is an emotion only felt between two people, but love is universal. It's an energy. It's contagious force, a gift to offer money to a homeless man is to love, to save a worm from the sun is to love and to smile at a stranger is love to be grateful, to be hopeful, to be brave and to be forgiving. Mm -hmm. It's an energy that you feel after doing something good for someone and not asking for anything in return. Mm. You know, helping the old lady reach something off the shelf, helping somebody accomplish something Mm -hmm. and just knowing that you got to be a part of it. That feeling you feel after is called the helper's high. They coined the term Mm. in like, I think it was the seventies and it's a scientific, um, uh, occurrence that happens within your body. It's an opening, I think, at the heart level, too. Yeah, exactly. So when my heart is, like, totally open, my mind and my eyes see clearly. And when I feel down about life circumstances, literally, I'm looking down upon my vessel So I'm holding those energies and those thoughts, whereas in a co-creative, not codependent reality, I can transform that, transmute it, and offer my vessel what it really needs. Mm -hmm. Which um, you were saying, um, it goes when you say it, it goes, dense energy knows this is the natural order of creation. Mm-hmm. And that comes in natural law with the divine law. It's it's uh, it's 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 present at all times because you actually have taken the time to tune in. Like you said, it's a it's a daily practice, right? Yeah, learning how to to move energy through my system, mm-hmm. you know, through my nervous system, through my body. So but when it you does, had your 33rd, like it was 33 years old when you had your second near-death experience. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. What was it they were showing you or your guides and what were those beings um, that you associate with through that experience? What, what were they showing you? And has that been ongoing? And can you connect with them still? Yeah, I, I, well, they're the ones who do most of the speaking when I don't realize I'm speaking. So, yeah, <laughs> um, they're the ones who give me all the ideas and technical stuff right um they showed me the the quantum field they showed me everything that i experienced at four that i couldn't access or or comprehend um they showed me that i was an energy that was standing in the middle of like a wheel 
and all around me were projections of my energy to the field to interpret reality. Mm. Like and we're only seeing, I think it's 3% of light with our a spectrum of light with our eyes. And there's another 97%. Um, everything is in a state of vibration. It's not solid at the moment. Of course, we know this from Einstein, mm -hmm. but the table is solid to me because I interpret it as solid. I interpret it as mm -hmm. vibrating at this lower frequency. So as I'm sending out my energy to the outer rim of this wheel, they're explaining to me, you're depositing energy here. Mm -hmm. And now it's coming back and it's cycling through your consciousness mm -hmm. so that you can have an interpretation of reality. So can we do this on a basis of, let's say, a victimization point and go out from that reality of, say, the victim was uh, sex assaulted and then mm -hmm. they carrying the karma, the, the baggage, the emotions, the um, neglect of self, the, you know, the downward spiral. Their quantum is still carrying it because they have not yet transmuted it into love and let it go. Right, so there's still basically a ground going there, grounding part of this person's personality. Would that make them more likely to attract these circumstance again? It would, depending on how much they identify with it. If they mm -hmm. think it's their fault, if they think uh, I could have changed this, or it had something to do with them, then it's right. more likely because they're going to need to learn that it just happens here and mm -hmm. there's tools and, and things we learn from it and power and strength we gain from it. Uh, I don't like to say, Hey, God makes everybody suffer, but suffering is kind of part of this planet. It seems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Us Buddhists, we don't disagree at all. We just take it and turn it into compassion. That's what our mantras are for. Right. And there's always going to be a creation of lower energy and then higher energy. And they're going to do their dance. But mm -hmm. whoever then, dances the most is up to us. Yeah. You you shared here as well, Steve. Um, looks like all those past entities are seeking validation. And that is what's harming you. Lay them to rest and consider that they are the fertilizer for a new life. Mm -hmm. So for everything that has sort of migrated into your personal quantum field, just the idea in my mind, like even as I'm making my hand motion like that, because in the healer, in the healer's rights, I'm conducting energy right now as we're speaking right between my hands. And if I'm seeing it through my mind, body self, this sort of negative or positive charge in my mind, third eye is looking at it in my higher self frequency without fear with love. Mm -hmm. I feel that's like an instantaneous thing for me now. Not that it was like that to begin with, by the way, because I clearly have had a lot of stuff that I needed to decharge and, and trust on. Um, and I will still need to trust. So. Yeah. Once you realize that you are the one feeling the feelings and not the feelings, you're then not you're kind feeling. of able to observe them and allow them to pass. Mm -hmm. um, I'm at such an observer perspective of my character mm. that I can bring up pretty much any memory and just be thankful for it as it passes through me that I was able to experience that uh, experience and gain wisdom in some way for it because mm -hmm. I'm just witnessing, okay, this held me down for so long. Now I'm feeling it differently. And that feels like a, uh, a win, so to speak. Right. And a win that is eternal <clears throat> because you're just in, well, the way I look at it is when I say, I say, we're taught that that is in part of the Lotus Sutra that we believe that all beings have the right to the light. Mm -hmm. So that's the mantra focus is that everyone can make it to the light. So they understand their choice as they're passing through lifetimes and they become uh, illuminated here. Therefore, it's it's like an eternal stance, right? Because um, I see and I believe that when we go back up in the Akasha or through the universe, there is always choice. 
earth now reflects less of that. And the ability for, for the human to make more choice means it takes on more responsibility and then it, it realizes what it is eventually, right? Mm -hmm. I think God, it, it, we might be neurons in the brain of God as he's having <laughs> his own awakening and healing his own trauma, he or she. That's um, amazing. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. Or like inside the I body like, of God I building like a little. I a dust on the backside, but, and I'd be <laughs> fine there because I've done those meditations as well. Um, I've had some revealing thoughts with God too. Um, so the cards here are saying that there's some powerful moves going on. Uh, I think this will be a consciousness read um, for the, the overall collective. Um, that there is an uh, awakening between the land and between us and our conscious reality, what we consider that, and that in that there are great and endless possibilities and that our cup is full, right? So again, you know, moving from what the mind creates reality to um, and not projecting, but in becoming um, aware that even through cards, right, I'm projecting a new reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're aligning the, your thought forms there. Mm -hmm. And your mind is, is very key. It's key to try to understand the feeling of knowing. And once you apply that knowing to everything, then you can sort of take control. No, this is my space. I know it is. I know it to be sacred. I know this is a holy vessel mm. and I'm okay. going to treat myself like I'm holy. And that doesn't mean you don't get to experience all these feelings and do all mm -hmm. these things. That means you're able to go into dark and go back to light at will. I'm not bound by the darkness. That's not mm. who I am. I'm just experiencing it. And actually create by, for me, by creating that experience, then I kind of, like the monk who walks the village, can project the light that I need to for myself. I think a lot of times when we're on a down and we're still in the lesson, it's like, you know, somebody catching you as you're running up the stairs. It's, it's like all these things are going on in my community and the thoughts go out and then the heartbeat starts and then it's like, Oh, like, why can't it just change? And and so um, those days become really emotional. But then when I actually just project the thought into the reality that they are changing mm -hmm. and allow for that, then I find that that I find rest or I find peace within myself. Yeah, because you're not so um, much attaching to it. It's yeah. a lot like a gemstone and the sunlight is coming through it. Well, if that mm -hmm. gemstone is a little dirty on the inside or our thoughts are, Mm -hmm. about ourselves in the world it's not going to reflect out in the way it would as if it was clean we mm -hmm. just need and to so understand you're talking about transmutation at this point so when you're dealing with people who have trauma-based backgrounds or people that are healing different disorders and stuff like that what do you like what is your steps with that and, and what do you mean by cleaning my step is to take the density and turn it into light. It's called transmutation alchemy. What I do is I connect a circuit, a circuit that I became aware of when I had my NDE. How I call on it is I call on the Holy Spirit or the pure spirit. I call on the Christ. This can also be the law of one, the singularity, the Krishna, the Buddha. There's many interpretations into cultures for this being that exists within us. And then I call on God and that's kind of open to my own interpretation. Mm. Um, for me, it is a, an image that we were made in that mm. I know we possess mm. and that we can attain again. Mm. So the very first thing I'll do is I'll ask Holy spirit, pure spirit into my consciousness. I'll ask the Christ, the law of one, to expand within me. So as this energy comes down and I'm plugged in, now this energy is being asked to expand and I ask God to surround me. And now mm -hmm. I'm surrounded with an expanded field. And by initiating that charge, that higher energy, higher frequency, mm -hmm. 
I'm now able to command emotional pain if there's a certain issue that I'm aware of, say it was an X. Um, I, I thank it and then I ask all lower energy associated with this experience to gather yourselves out of cellular memory because that's where the charges are stored. Mm -hmm. That's what kind of communicates back and forth with the field. Um, I command it to gather together into one charge rather than being all spread out. And as it comes together, it makes a bigger charge. And this bigger charge combined with the light that I'm now asked into me creates polarity and that changes the density into light. Uh, clients usually start yawning and yawning and yawning and yawning. And you so, do this over video or do you do this? Yeah, I can do it from anywhere. Okay. Yep. Uh, quantum entanglement. Mm -hmm. So I can initiate what's known as action potential in the neurological world on cellular memory by creating a threshold and uh, basically enough voltage to start these negative charges to come together and they start cleansing their way up. And this usually makes people yawn, not right. always, but usually. Yeah, and expel as well. I find that um, when I'm in my strongest force and I'm doing that kind of work, I feel like I need to use the bathroom a lot. Um, yeah, people, people need to, uh, I took this excerpt, excerpt from one of your distant healing sessions. It looks like, um, Tia, mm -hmm. like a truly happy with her session have been trying to do some healings for some betrayals and being stuck in the loop of negative thought and depression. Is it okay if I disclose this? I don't care. Okay. Um, it felt a tangible energetic movement of things leaving my body. There was one point during the healing when we were not on call, but I was lying down and the work was being done. And the releasing of the crying, releasing the trauma I've been feeling was causing me daily anxiety. It happened about five minutes after he had hung up that he could work. After the session was over, I called back and I reported how I was feeling revealed that he released a lot of stuck energy and caused him to yawn so that he had tears in his eyes. I stopped him there so I could ask how far into the healing did that happen? And he told me five to 10 minutes. And that's exactly when I started crying is what she reported. And she was floored. He was mentioned that a grandmother figure had come in and kept following him shoes, his shoes for some reason. I only had one grandmother and who I was very close to in the entire life. She walked everywhere and never drove. I knew I had indeed connected to her. Knowing she is with me brought me so much peace. Steve has made himself available for questions and concerns. And since our session continues to be a support for guidance, cannot thank him enough. Um, Felt emotionally energetic burdens had dissipated without resurfacing. The thoughts have come up with the painful emotion charge. He is a beautiful soul with an incredible gift. Yeah, so like you can feel them and witness them, but not feel them on the same magnitude you were feeling them before where they're overtaking you. Hey, I'm able to look at this and able to do this without having the same response I had. That's because you got rid of all that charge memory cellular memory wow and it took me a while to figure out a lot of this what it was actually happening you know um what was what yeah because it's a very powerful move right this i don't know if you can see how pretty this card is but mm -hmm. it's like an unlocking key to the chess kingdom of yourself i mean it's it's like we do exist in a society where self self-development and doing for oneself is like sort of a next level right and then the more that you could do it for me that i can transmute it and realize it's all energy and not hold on to it is sort of like washing your hands mm -hmm. you know you just do it intentionally when you walk through the door because you know that you've had your hands on all this stuff it's like we clean the outside of our body yeah. so every day. Why don't we clean the inside with our emotions and our thoughts? 
-hmm. And we're also taught to feel selfish. We're sort of programmed to feel selfish if we're doing for ourselves, Mm -hmm. which so we're kind of that's in there a little bit, too. Mm -hmm. But it's not selfish because if you give yourself the time, everything is just time is elastic. You know, and that's proven by not wanting to be at work and time going by slow Mm. and doing something you love and is fun and time going by fast. Which then accumulates more wealth because then you're not abandoning your soul. Mm -hmm. Um, My therapist uses the idea of a stool with three legs. And if you have mind, body, soul as each one of those legs, if you're not in spirit with yourself and if you're not realizing what's embodied for yourself, meaning agreeing to let go of the traumas, the emotions and the thoughts and the anxiety, and then the body itself, right? It's all one unit, Mm -hmm. although it has many faceted um, magnificent things, as we said, as our creator, the creator, um, we are made of that fiber to create anything and be anything, which in the beginning was energy. And in the beginning was light and in the beginning was sound and in the beginning before there was physical form Mm -hmm. and the frequencies and energies we send are sound on a subtle subtle level you Mm -hmm. know oh there's so many sounds uh one part of my enlightenment has been able to tune into the sounds and the dimensions and it's been a lot of tuning and i think it continually will be So that we're hearing, feeling, seeing, and touching it. It's it's a kind of like extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Mm-hmm. It's pretty wild to realize you're an energy in this body. And this is just your vehicle. And to kind of lose identity with the physical world and be feel that that other space is more authentic. Because to me it is. Everything happens on that lo- uh, level underneath the things we can't see. And I think, too, we have an interpretation of ourselves as we see the world with others, too. And of some of those lessons, they have to be let go of in order to see ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's one thing to be vicarious and, and want to know people and see people and stuff. But it's another thing to hold power and strength and realize that that's all um, the possibility of a new version. I mean... Mm -hmm. New version itself is very new age and it's very um, intense and powerful. But with the quantum being so accessible, there's always a new version, I think, being offered. It's as we're working out those entanglements and those knots, like like a bad pain in your back, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a, a large charge. And you visit it enough and you transmute it enough and you command to take that space back. This is my holy space. The more you embody that higher self, the more you can look at these things again and say, why was I so attached to that? Not not to the fact that it didn't hurt, but why did it stay so long? Mm -hmm. And and as well, I think there's a gift in that. I I don't know. I, I would think my pain is minimal compared to my own emancipation. So sometimes maybe it meets in its polarity. Yeah, without that pain, it wouldn't challenge you to change, to rise, to find all the best parts of yourself, to witness how really strong you are and, and how beautiful a comeback story is. Like, we can't come here and just have a whole oh, peachy, peachy life. And, <laughs> you know, it's like, who wants to watch that story? I want to watch a story where somebody goes through the ups and downs and has a win at the end, returns as love. You know, that to me, that's really embodies my heart. Yeah. And I think that's what you're definitely um, conveying to your audience and to your clients is this consistency that it's done consistently. And I think when the teacher is consistent, it becomes far more um, engaging to work along with that person. Yeah, I think it's more relatable because I'm like, listen, man, I was not any different than you guys. Mm. If I can do this, anybody can do this. I was the least worthy to be loved. I was all this stuff. And and when I look back in the scripture and I look at the 12 disciples and the people that they were when, when Christ chose them, it's like, yes, I'm that. 
And without the story of me being the lowest of the low and the, not that I hurt anybody, but I was just caught up in all my trauma and I projected a lot of pain on the people that it wasn't theirs. They had their own to heal. You know, mm -hmm. I had to take responsibility for myself and become accountable and just being seen, uh, because my parents thought I was crazy. Uh, my friends thought I was crazy. My ex thought I was crazy and weird because I started to have all these psychic things start to happen mm -hmm. and to come out of it on the other end and now be teaching people and change, have witnessing them changing their lives. Um, means everything to me. It's like the greatest comeback of being able to be present enough to give people love instead of myself. You know, it was about me in the past and it's not about me anymore. Mm, beautiful. And um, so do you find um, as and after going through your near death experience that there's been so many changes and does it change through the clients as well? Cause I can imagine as a healer, you know, um, we change a lot because of the experience of the people we're working with. Oh yeah. You start, your soul starts to need different things to feel satisfied. Mm -hmm. Um, initially for things, me, I find less. yes, minimal. Yeah. And you start to become truly happy with just being, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's where it's at. It's like, uh, my personality changed so drastically. People got scared when it when it first started to, to mm. happen. I started and what was to read that came from though. Was it some ego work there for you? Oh yeah, for sure. I had a big ego for a long mm. time. And not about this, but in my personal life before mm. I even started to discover I had a gift for healing and things like that. But first I had to heal myself of this ego, of this arrogance that I thought everybody else that I thought the world revolved around Steve, mm -hmm. which it does not. And for me to figure out and flip the script and start to give back and feel what it was like to be other people, I had to develop that empathy for them. And I think my pain had a lot to do with that. So now I can, all these painful experiences I experience, I can now empathize with that person, that person, that person, that person. Mm -hmm. Did we almost do a visualization today together or try and do something for the collective? I mean, sometimes when you're I'm kind of putting me on the spot here, I know, but I'll work along with you. I'm your student too. So if you need help, I just, I kind of was sensing that we could send out some energy and thoughts. We can definitely do that. Yeah. Because we could choose a non-issue or we could choose, um, just a point of mind, like I like the prayer and the, the mind of God and the mind of man so that love and light flow on the earth. And may that illuminate the mind of man. There you go. You can do it. That way I can I can relax because I'm not used to relaxing. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back then because I actually say it. For, I'll, I'll say it and then you can experience it. Perfect. I'm not used to being the experiencer. <laughs> So many changes and moves around my studio space. It's not where it's usually at. So maybe I could just do a visualization from my mind and see. Yes, and I will send out energy as you're doing it. Okay. So we'll just say. Um, Anybody watching, just be open to receive and yeah. welcome it in. Yeah. And if you're out there and you want to receive and you just uh, say are ready to take that journey inward to dissipate the pain that maybe the body is feeling or the mind is still circulating. Um, so we can say um, a graceful thank you to our vessels and our being and our time here on the planet um, as well. Um, we are a collective and consciousness and uh, although many challenges and um, let's say agreements have needed to be made that we rise up in the thought of love. And that love is gonna permeate now for us through our vessels. Um, it's coming through our minds and it's clearing over our pain and it's 
illuminating from inside of ourselves. It's coming through um, to our throats and opening up the ability to speak our truth and to relax and let go of those thoughts that are no longer serving us. And it's permeating down into our heart center, knowing that we come through in that purity of self, that we are not objectified and that we are sovereign beings. You can feel it coming through to our solar plexus into our groin area and we're okay with our physical vessel and allowing it to work in the light um, all the way down into the hips, relaxing the hips into our thighs and finding its way to our knees, holding ourselves and letting and releasing all our burdens that we've held on to in this lifetime, coordinated with past lifetimes and etc. Flowing into our calves, and down to our ankles, where we meet with Mother Gaia, Earth, Earth Mother, where we experience all of the elements. And we're feeling that come right out through our toesies as we're placing our toes against the earth and welcoming ourselves to heal, releasing and relaxing and just allowing ourselves to be present in the moment in the fullness of our own breath and filling ourselves from the belly up with only love. And there's no expectations, no criticisms, just letting the vessel feel what it's like to be present in the here and now moment. every fiber of being connected to that which created us, creator, the great creator. There we go. That was good. I could listen to that all day. I felt like I felt like I was tingling all over. <laughs> yeah, I could feel the energy start to pick up for sure. Cause I've, I, you know, it's kind of weird. I've never done it from the crown down. Like mm -hmm. I've always only thought of it from the toes up because you're usually lying and you think your toes and, you know, I've done the love of the toes and the ankles right. and all the way. But that was a different feeling to connect with Gaia and the unknowing. Where you, ever see, up. <laughs> you ever see Star Trek where they beam them up? Oh, yeah. That's kind of like the way I envision bringing the spirit down. It's like a tube of light goes yeah. around you. And then, yeah. of course, the energy from Mother Earth comes up through the bottom of your feet. And then they meet in the middle and then they expand. And the mother, mother, father have a son. Mm -hmm. And then you have the sun inside you. Mm -hmm. Or the central sun is actually to our location. I've just got into this whole thing of watching the sunset and realizing mm -hmm. where I am on the planet. And every time I do, I'm still, I'm like a baby about it. Cause I'm just like, really, this is incredible. <laughs> this is happening right here underneath my feet. Like no screening, no TVs, no interruptions. And I'm just yeah, like, it's so beautiful. Right. And that we're actually moving in a universe. We're standing on a planet moving in a universe while these planets are positioning themselves to give us light and to give us dark. It's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Well, I thank you for that. I think that was really nice that I was able to to do that because. Well, I'm glad you did it. I'm I'm kind of used to doing it, and I don't get to experience <laughs> it much, and it was really good. So, thank you. You're welcome. So, are you available, Steve? Would you say that you would be wanting to have clients or somebody to come on if they needed help? Obviously. Sure. Absolutely. Um, you can get in touch with me. Uh, my phone number is 860-877-8234. You can mm -hmm. send me a text. You can send me an email at trinityhealingreiki at gmail.com. Or you can get a hold of me on Facebook at Trinity Healing Reiki. Yeah. 
there's a big and beautiful thing going on with us and I'm glad to be on the journey with you. And so next week we'll try meeting at the same time. Yeah, we can do that. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm very uh, grateful that you have a platform that you allow me to share on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe we can bring in another guest and talk about healing modalities, more about Christ consciousness, understanding how many lifetimes we've come to be in order to have this conversation. Sure. We can talk about aliens, talk about whatever. <laughs> all our brothers and sisters in the universe. Well, love and light. And thank you so much for today. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.